The ultimate electronics learning system would be so simple that even a child could do it. Magnetic, perhaps. Modular, so you can swap a whole range of bits in and out of your projects to experiment as you get more confident. And progressive, so you could start off with easy circuits that don't really need any programming, batteries, LEDs, buttons, that sort of thing, then move on to basic scratch programming, then perhaps some Arduino, such that it could cater for every level of the curriculum. Lastly, I would probably throw Lego compatible in there because Lego is obviously one of the best tools for creativity and engineering ever made. Boom. This is the Elecro Crowbits and it is exactly everything I just described and it's crowdfunding now. I'm James Bruce, you're watching makeuseof.com reviews. Okay, before I begin, quick disclaimer, these were sent to me by Elecro to evaluate during their crowdfunding Kickstarter, uh, which means that things are still subject to change, some bits were missing, some bits didn't work as they should, and the software is not yet fully developed, it's a bit buggy. But this is to be expected with a prototype product, and of course I'm not going to evaluate it on the basis of being a uh, finished final product available now, but rather as a prototype and a promise that's still in development. Now it's slated for delivery in June of this year. This is not a sponsored review, Elecro had no input on the direction or outcome of the video, so everything here is my opinion. Also, this is a Kickstarter. That means it comes with an inherent risk of a company running away with your money and not really being legally obliged to deliver anything at all, in fact. Uh, like some of you, I have lost thousands of dollars on Kickstarter projects that have never materialized. Uh, however, Elecro is a well-established company and I believe they're using Kickstarter, honestly, just for marketing. I have, I have every confidence it will deliver just like the previous Elecro crowdfunding campaigns. This is not their first uh, campaign. They do have a history of successful products such as the awesome CrowPie 1 and 2 laptops, uh, and they have a reputation to maintain. So with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the Elecro Crowbits STEM learning system. So the Crowbits kits are divided into five stages, though all of the modules are compatible uh, with each other kit. Some are actually duplicated between the kits and all of the kits are also compatible with Lego bricks. So they all share a common system with pinholes on the sides and some dot patterns on the base. Now, as you level up through each graded set, it introduces more complex concepts and programming options. The first stage is the Hello Kit, and there's zero programming needed. Essentially, you're just making basic circuits, power, input, output. All of the projects in the Hello Kit are based on cardboard only, and it would be suitable for ages five plus, I would say. The box says six, though. The planned RRP is $40, but you can get this introductory kit for $30 during the Kickstarter. One step up from that is the Explorer Kit for seven to eight-year-olds, I would say. It's seemingly the biggest set in the line, containing 13 modular components, but still doesn't require programming. Um, also in the box, you'll find again some cardboard pieces, as well as a big pack of Lego compatible Technic bricks. Now I should stress that this isn't actual Lego, it's a brand called Kader that I've not come across before, but it is completely compatible with standard Lego bricks and actually pretty well made, it fits together nicely uh, and it's secure. The Explorer kit also introduces movement through the use of a single DC motor and other external components to make projects such as this Walker Dog. The planned retail price is $130, though you can still grab it in early access, you can get it for $80. One up from that is the Inventor Kit, uh, the main module of which can also be used with the BBC Microbit version 1, and it's more appropriate for 9 to 10 year olds, I'd say. If you're not familiar, the BBC Microbit is a hardware programming board. I don't know about in the US, but in the UK at least, it's used as a basic introduction to hardware programming. It's on the curriculum. The Microbit simply slots into the main Crowbit module and is then used as the controller for the projects to add in some programming. I don't think the micro bit is included, but it might be a stretch goal or an add-on if you don't already have one. This pack also contains a large number of Technic bricks, two motors, uh, and various sensors that are more appropriate for robotics, a self-driving car, etc. The retail price is $140, and the early bird pricing is $90 for that one. 
The one kit I can't show you because it isn't ready for testing yet is the Creator Kit, which is an Arduino Uno based board. It doesn't include any movement motors, but it does have a vibration module, temperature and moisture sensor, so you can make some sort of smart home projects. That is apparently RRP $150 or early bird pricing $100, but I can't comment on that. More details on the Kickstarter. Finally, you have the Master Kit. And while the box says age 10 plus, I'd put this more at 14 and up, actually as well as more complex programming options using the ESP32 based Crobit module uh, with a color screen. It's designed to bring ideas together uh, into fully working, more realistic products and even includes a silicon case for both a retro gaming console and a working mobile phone with 2G capabilities. Again, RRP 150, early bird pricing $100. Okay, so let's talk about the core uh, magnetic Crowbit idea then. There's four types of modules and they're all color coded for easy distinction. Blue is the core modules. That's the battery, the logic modules, and any controllers. Yellow is the inputs, buttons, sensors, that sort of thing. Green are the outputs, LEDs, buzzers, motors, etc. Then finally you have orange modules and these are a little bit more complex bits like the 2G communications hub, or the laser range finder that you'll find in the master kit. These need serial connectivity, so you can't just throw them into an output channel and expect them to work. But don't worry, these are only in the more advanced kit, so by that point you would know how to use them. Since the first two kits don't even need coding, how does that even work? Well, at a basic level, each crow bit can be magnetically attached to each other and then chained together to make simple circuits, as long as you follow some basic rules. Blue power and battery modules can go anywhere in the circuit, but they must always be placed face up, same as other modules. Yellow input modules must always be on the left side of the green output modules, and this creates a simple circuit. But you can also chain together multiple outputs uh, with one input, or you can start a new input output chain such that another input controls another new output. If you need a particular module to be somewhere else, you can use one of these breakout cables. In the later kits, the programming modules include pin numbers, which can then be addressed in software to detect a particular input or output that's attached to that pin. All of the modules, as I mentioned, can be clipped onto Lego bricks or base plates from the underside. Uh, or attached to Technic beams from the pinholes on the side. So it's very easy to build around your projects uh, with your own Lego parts or with the included Lego Technic bits. For the advanced kits that either use a BBC micro bit or are themselves programmable like the ESP32 based board in the master kit, Elecro has created a custom version of the make code software called Let's Code. And that's a programming environment which is in turn based on Scratch 3. Now that's a well-developed, open-source, block-based graphical programming system that your child is probably already familiar with uh, if they've started learning programming lessons at school. I think that's about age eight or nine that that happens. If that's too simplistic for you and you want them to jump into actual coding, then you'll be able to do so as well with MicroPython or Java. Right now, the test version of the app only runs on Windows, but macOS and Raspberry Pi versions are planned. So, of course, I haven't had time to build all of the projects. I've only had this for about a week, but I did try a few from each different set, and I was mostly really impressed. The Technic bits fit together well. They're quite solid, which is always a bit of a worry when you have off-brand Lego. Uh, the only slight annoyance I had when building and combining the modules onto the build was that these white cables uh, could really do with having a sort of stiff memory wire. Uh, within them. It can be a bit difficult to snake them around uh, between two ports, especially if they're close together. The cable kind of wants to uncoil a bit and because the connections are magnetic, of course, they can sometimes pull off. But with a bit of effort, you can make it work. The instructions are generally good, though they could do with some video versions being produced. Some of the diagrams are a little bit small and complicated for my six-year-old anyway, but you should have no problem as long as you have an adult to supervise. Not because the modules are easy to break as such, they're pretty robust actually, but just because the instructions being a little bit uh, small can be tricky to understand sometimes. The modules themselves are solid and the magnetic force is just enough. 
Of course, if you hold it in midair, then they can snag and break the connection down, but normally you wouldn't do that. And if you did want to make something handheld, uh, just secure it onto a Lego plate or Technic beam first. Overall though, building these has been a lot of fun for the whole family. My son did some builds with mine and my wife's supervision. I did some of the more complex builds by myself. He is only six after all. And he had a go with the programming interface. All really great stuff, though I did feel like the concept explanations in the instructions could have been uh, a bit better thought out in places. It might have just been a language issue, though the English isn't perfect. The Lego build diagrams are also a little small. Hopefully you'll be able to download those as well, so you can put them on an iPad and zoom it, or view on a bigger monitor and then follow along. Also, this might sound a little bit nerdy at this point, but the Lego diagrams, the build diagrams, are in the opposite reading order to typical Lego instructions, which go top to bottom. These go left to right. Sorry, if you are a Lego fan household though, uh, my son kept skipping steps because he was reading downwards. But the real beauty of the Crowbits learning experience is when you realize that you can easily modify existing models with everything you've learned already and just revisit them later to upgrade them. For instance, the Explorer kit uh, contains this walker dog project thing. It's driven by a single motor, a battery, and a push button, very simple. But the very next project, there's a lift which has an RF remote control to make it go up or down. Now, as soon as you see that, you see the wiring diagram, you realize, oh, hang on, I can make my walker remote control too, so it can now go forwards or backwards. Uh, and within a minute, you've modified it to give your walker remote control. Very cool. The kits do vary greatly though, and while I appreciate that the smallest and simplest of sets, the, the Hello kit is really just an introduction, um, I felt like the projects were a little bit too contrived and the cardboard model making part of it was uh, not so fun. For instance, the very first project is a no touch box, which sets off an alarm when you touch it. Now I set my wife and six year old onto that. She misunderstood the instructions, taped the foil into the wrong place. And although the wiring is fairly simple, it's just a touch sensor. Um, with a battery and buzzer, uh, the sticky backed foil just doesn't work so well combined with that touch sensor. So straight away we just moved on up to the Explorer kit, which comes with some Lego projects, Technic Bits 2, which was a lot more engaging than building models out of cardboard. Uh, even for young kids, I would just go straight in at the higher price point with the Explorer kit. It still doesn't use programming, but it has a bigger battery and more options. Uh, so basically, if you're going to buy one kit to get a feel for it, then go for the Explorer kit, I would say, uh, or the Inventor kit that comes with programming opportunities too. I also wasn't the biggest fan of the highest level kit available, the Master Kit, uh, with the game console, for instance. Um, the electronic side of it is just a little bit too simple. It's really just two joystick modules. Uh, and the main ESP32 board in the middle. And then most of this project is loading firmware onto the device, which is quite complicated and not particularly fun. Although the finished product is cool. Uh, the files I got included 300 Game Boy ROMs, which I don't think will be included in the final project though, but it's easy enough to source those ROMs for yourself. The phone communications module is 2G only. Again, a very simple three module project, uh, but many countries will be turning off 2G networks this year. So hopefully Elocro will make that a 3G unit uh, or it may not function where you are. The core module is ESP32 based board with an LCD screen, which is cool. But at this level of complexity, uh, perhaps magnetic blocks isn't appropriate anymore. Basically, I think the best of the kits uh, sits in between them all with the Explorer, the Inventor Kit, etc. The combination of LEGO compatible engineering and circuits that get increasingly more complex with slightly more programming uh, with the Scratch 3 system, uh, that's really where the best of this lies. That's also going to perfectly align with a sort of key stage three and above. So seven to 14 is the ideal age for the Crowbit system. And within that range, it's incredible. Now the modules also extend beyond what's available in the kit. So for instance, you'll find a simple not logic module with the Hello kit. Uh, if you're not versed in logic operations, that just flips whatever input or output you have on it. So uh, if you have the battery, the button and LED, you press the button to turn on the LED, then putting the not operator module in will make the LED normally on with the button to turn it off. 
and otherwise the exact same modules. And there's also other Logic modules that are not in the kits. So I think this will be a great teaching tool down the line once all of those modules are available as well for a variety of curriculum topics. So it's definitely a complete system that you're buying into rather than just uh, one set kit with just these models. Anyway, should you back the Elecro Crobits Ultimate STEM Learning System? Absolutely. If you want your child to have a competitive edge in programming, electronics and engineering, then supplementing the schoolwork is almost essential. And while most schools have gone back, in the UK anyway, I don't know the situation around the world, but it's possible you've now opted to fully homeschool or just to supplement their existing schooling, which is inevitably going to be different for the next couple of years. I don't want to say substandard, but there's going to be a lot less practical work going on purely because of the aspect of touching shared equipment. So having this sort of kit uh, at home with software that's familiar to them, that's already being used in schools, I think is going to be of great benefit. If you do want every one of the kits that's available to give you the full learning journey from 6 to 14, set them up uh, for their whole school life, uh, then you can get them all as a bundle for $400, which will rise to 610 RRP after the campaign. Personally, as I mentioned, I think the best value, the best equipped set, uh, the ones with lots of movement and Lego engineering, is the Explorer, Inventor, and then Master Kit, which you can grab for 270 as a bundle. And that too easily covers the same broad spectrum of STEM learning from 6 to 14 while skipping out the introductory Hello Kit, which I don't think is worth bothering with, uh, and also doesn't include the Arduino-based Creator Kit. Arduino isn't generally used in school, and the ESP32 board is better anyway at higher levels. So definitely if you want the best value, I would recommend the Explorer Inventor Master Kit, though again, you can buy them all if you want to. The closest comparison is perhaps an official uh, LEGO Mindstorms Robotics Kit, which is around $350 and more aimed at robotics, obviously. Out of the box, it's limited to distance and color sensors with four motors and a load of Technic pieces. It's not really suitable for much younger children. It doesn't have any of the magnetic block uh, learning system. It's all cabled and a little bit fiddly, but perhaps it's a good step up uh, from the Crobit system. Once they've hit sort of 15 to 16 years old, I don't think this would be appropriate anymore at about that age. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has given you a good overview of the whole Crobit system and some of the cool projects that you can build with it. What the differences are between the sets and whether it's something that you want to use at home with your children. Thank you to Elecro for sending this over and thank you to you for watching. Do hit like if you found this review helpful and consider subscribing for daily tech news in our new Tech Bytes show and more gadget reviews like this from all of us over at muo or makeuseof.com.